Welcome all summon continuing this series of women in the Viking Age. It's been a while, uh, but I meant to continue this one. Most of you know already that women in the Viking Age and really the original Germanic tribal whole world uh, before they were Christian at least treated their women pretty much better than any other culture in history. One of the reasons we can see this is their divorce laws. Uh, Scandinavia at the time was one of the few places in the world where women could divorce their husbands if they wanted, uh, but I see some very incorrect things being said about it online, so I'm going over the actual sources in this video uh, to show you what the reality was. So, uh, what we in our modern society have a difficult time grasping is the concept of an oath or a promise. Today we don't give a shit about all this, but in previous times in history, all over the world, oaths and promises were the most sacred and important things you can do. That's why we see in the Viking Age, for example, these oath rings swearing oaths to kings, why they took that so seriously, and why they took swearing an oath into a new religion so seriously. It's because when they swore an oath, they meant it. And remember also in Norse mythology, Niflheim, the deepest layer of hell in Norse mythology, was reserved for oath breakers and traitors. A marriage is an oath too. If you swear this marriage oath to someone, you don't just get to change your mind later in life because you feel like it. And these notions going around that women could just get divorced in the Viking Age anytime they felt like it, that's not true, but there are some good occasions and reasons where a woman could legally divorce, uh, here they are. Uh, first, I, I'm going over the Norse sources here, but first we'll speak about one other foreign source. Uh, there was a Spanish-Arabic traveler who visited Denmark in the 900s, and he recorded that he was su so surprised to hear that women had the right to divorce if they wished. Uh, and this guy was a guy that traveled everywhere. He was traveling all over Europe, all over the Mediterranean, even getting into Asia, and only in Denmark did he hear that uh, women could uh, divorce if they wished. Um, so that is a foreign source just confirming this, uh, what the Norse sources say too. Uh, but it's not quite that simple. As you'll see one reason to get divorced here we can find in Njall's saga. This one's a pretty funny reason actually. If the husband had settled in a new country, moved away from his wife and settled in a new country and he was no longer around, and if the man did not return home to bed his wife, for three years, the law states, then the wife could get a divorce. <laughs> so if her husband wasn't giving her the D, you know, a man could basically move away to another country, never be home, and he could come back just once a year and bang his wife and she did not have the right to divorce him because of the distance. That's one of the first reasons we see. The next, of course, infidelity. Now, this one is not quite fair, what we see in the sources. We have a few sources that say uh, a man could divorce his wife if she cheated, um, and the woman would often get a, a much harsher punishment than that, fines and even death in different times and places in Scandinavia uh, if the woman cheated, but this rule was not as strict for men, which is not quite fair. The men could take mistresses, uh, or kings, especially kings and royalty and nobles, could even take multiple wives. Um, and, and basically, the only trouble that a man could get in for cheating was if he actually slept with another man's wife. <laughs> All that being said, um, these were laws and customs that were recorded and come up occasionally in the sagas, but they were rarely, rarely put into effect. The idea you know, that in pagan times everyone could just go out and be hoes and sleep around with the whole village and like you see in Vikings, the brothers passing around the same women. That was absolutely not true. We have these laws, but we have almost zero mentions of infidelity in all the sagas. The only ones I can really think of are, of course, if you were a king or chieftain or noble or something like that, they could be away and, and having a pretty slave girl, or they could bring in a mistress or two. Um, or, of course, if you were King Huddled Fairhair, he took multiple mistresses and he had about 30 kids, but for the general population, infidelity was just not a thing that happened. So all that doesn't sound very fair to women at all, but wait until you hear this next one. In the Gjorgos laws of uh, Iceland, a woman could divorce a man if the man basically ended up in a situation that resulted in poverty for the family. In that case, the woman could get a divorce. 
but the man couldn't, okay? <laughs> That's not very fair to the man, okay? The man works hard, but then maybe some hard times come, his business doesn't do well, or a famine happens, or whatever, he loses it all, and at that lowest moment in his life, when he needs his family now more than ever, his wife kicks his ass to the curb. <laughs> Does that sound fair, like gender equality? Uh, and also remember, the man was required by law to take care of the women's family, like parents and stuff, as they got old. So yeah, the husband, uh, according to Old Norse law, was allowed to cheat, and the woman wasn't. But the man also faced the burden of uh, providing for the entire family himself, and if something happened where he wasn't able to do that and, and be financially successful, the woman could just leave. Oh look, nothing <laughs> changes there over history. The same shit happens today, especially in this city, Los Angeles, where I'm living in now. Every person here is either a sugar daddy or sugar baby. I'm just saying, true gender equality has to be on all issues, and that is never going to happen because both genders just want to cherry pick and only take the things that benefit them. So this is the way it was in Old Norse. It's a bit different today, but some things never change. Anyway, on to the next one. Uh, the Norwegian law code Gulathing. It was from a bit after the Viking Age that was recorded, but most of the laws in here are much older than that. Violence. If the husband slapped his wife once, she would be entitled to a big compensation uh, from the husband that he had to pay her. If the husband slapped her three times at any point, she could legally get a divorce. Not only that, but the husband would probably be killed by the woman's brothers or cousins or something like that. You gotta understand, violence against women was extremely dishonorable in, in the Viking Age. Even something as little as a slap. <laughs> you know, when Olav Tryggvason took his glove off and slapped the Swedish princess with it, it was enough to make all Scandinavia just furious with rage enough to wage war against the Olav Tryggvason. On the opposite side, not the same law applies to a woman. A woman could slap a man, but according to the Icelandic Grjogos laws, a man could not divorce his wife if she slapped him. Instead, a man could only divorce his wife if she caused what they call an Old Norse meirasar mitis, or great wounds. So those are like deep, potentially life-threatening wounds, like cuts and things like that. Just saying, not gender equality there. Also saying, do these laws uh, sound like they were made by a culture that brings women to battle with them? Hmm, not really. It's just more evidence showing how shield maidens were a myth. Uh, women were so protected that you were not even allowed to slap them, but a woman could cut her husband near to death with an axe and she would just get a divorce as a penalty. So, not, not really fair there, but hey, no complaining from me. I think any man cowardly enough to hit a woman deserves much worse than a divorce, and I, for one, like a feisty lady. <laughs> I always say, if your woman doesn't smack you every once in a while, she just doesn't love you that much. But maybe that's me. Maybe I have a problem. Finally, on to one more law in the Icelandic uh, Grjogos uh, source. Um, if a man tried to take his wife out of the country against her will, uh, in that case, she could divorce him too. So a man couldn't just take her away from her family and her home. So very strong focus on her homeland and the country and, and where her family was. Um, one final reason um, that could be a cause for divorce is if you could prove your partner was gay or if they cross-dressed or whatever. We see a few examples of this in a couple sagas, but the most vivid account is in Laxdara saga. A woman uh, wanted to divorce her husband in here, but she didn't really have a good reason to, so she sewed him a low-cut shirt exposing his chest like it was regarded as really gay and your wife could divorce you for wearing this if you were caught out in public like that. On the other hand, if a woman wore pants out in public, the man could divorce her. You know, the man uh, was in, in this very same story, Laksdara Saga, he tricked his wife into wearing uh, some pants and made her go out in public with it so that he could get a divorce, and the wife actually retaliated by chopping him with an axe. So there you go, you get the point. Uh, those are some of the sources. I might have missed some. If there's any others um, that I missed, then you guys can leave it down in the comments. So yeah, a woman could ask for a divorce in the Viking Age as well as the man, but the oath of a marriage was still very sacred and you could not just divorce for any old reason. It seems a little unfair um, from the men and the women, but as always, 
I think we can learn something from these old cultures today. And as always, I never make videos about useless historical information. I only speak about things that matter and what we can learn from. I mean, just look at the divorce rates today in the modern times, and I'm even ashamed that the home of Scandinavia has some of the highest divorce rates in the world. Look, if you are unhappy, cool, go ahead and get a divorce, that's fine, but just think the allowance and tolerance of divorces and carelessness for the sacredness of a marriage and oath. It's different in history, and this kind of behavior leads people to being shittier human beings. So, if the woman did not have the option of just divorcing her husband anytime she wanted, she would probably stop getting with shitty guys if that was the case. I know this will hit home for some of the few ladies watching, but it's true. If divorce was not an option, or if, if there wasn't birth control available <laughs> like it was before in history, um, women would be much more picky about who they married and who they open up their legs for. On the other hand, this creates better, more honorable men in a society too. I'm also going to attack the worthless men out there today. Today, any loser guy who has just a little bit of flash and some smooth words can get laid. It's not that hard. Back in the Viking Age and many other ancient cultures, getting laid and finding a woman was very, very hard. <laughs> there was no birth control or easy divorce, so the women back then were going to be much, much better at vetting out the bad guys and actually picking a good one to be with. This forces the men to actually work on themselves to be more successful, attractive, and honorable with a good reputation in the village and over time when that happens shitty guys start to fade out and they can't find a woman and they can't procreate so it makes you know guys and girls and families just better so there you go promiscuous behavior leads to shitty society indirectly i know a lot of pagans would disagree a lot of them think that just because Christianity disapproves of a certain behavior, then that automatically makes the pagan beliefs the opposite and approves of it, but that is not true most of the time. And uh, you can see that when you actually study the history. So go ahead and argue about it in the comments, but that's all for the video. Hope you learned something at least. Uh,